Okay, so now I'm going to teach you guys, hi peeps, I'm going to teach you guys how to make a letter interesting. You have to give it um, dynamicism, meaning movement. You have to make it interesting to look at. Now, how do you do that? Well, there's all kinds of things you can do. Um, and the reason I chose an R is because an R has everything that you're going to need for your further letters. It has up and down, it has a curve, and it has a diagonal. So once you decide your style on something like an R, you can use it for everything else. So styles are either, to me, either like hard or soft, or they're um, swishy, okay? So hard, soft, and swishy. So let me give you an example first of um, a soft style, okay? I'm going to um, mess around with the letter. And what you do is you take the letter and you're going to distort it. So if I'm gonna go soft style, a soft style includes like bubble letters. So I'm going to probably, let me just make this darker and ta -da. okay. I'm probably gonna round off the corners. All right, and you never want your graffiti art to be skinny. Skinny is no bueno when it comes to graffiti. You want it to be chunky. Okay, so what I'm doing is instead of lines, all I'm doing is I'm just kind of boop, going like that. And so this is definitely um, one way I could do it, right? So that R, let me move it. I can move this over and I have something that's kind of like really cool. It's kind of, um, it's a little bit of a bubble letter, okay? So it's a soft style. There's different soft styles. So like I can do something like this. And that also is a soft style, okay? So whenever you're rounding things, that's a soft style. And it's it's fairly easy. You can just, um, oh, let me just do that one here. Let me move that guy over, you see? Now I have a soft style. And of course you wanna add like, delightful things to it like little curves and you know I'm not even talking about marker techniques and how to color it yet and all those nice things that you can do right now we're just getting shapes okay so the swishy style usually um you can have like arrows and stuff in it and it's really cool so like for instance um I'm gonna bring this out and I'm gonna um make an arrow okay you see how I kind of do that so that's the first thing I'm going to do. Oh, I'm going to put an arrow there, okay? And then I'm going to swish it around. Now, what you don't want in your artwork, in your graffiti art, is these kind of, remember I talked to you about this in another thing too, but I'm going to reiterate. So you don't want vertical and horizontal lines because they stop the eye. They're not very they're not very interesting to the eye because they don't make it move. And in art, things that make your eyes move make your eyes happy. It gives it just more interest. But diagonal lines make your eye move right away because it brings your eye back. So a person looking at a diagonal line will actually follow the line from front to, to end. But when it comes to horizontal and vertical, they won't. So I want to get rid of the blockiness of my letter. I don't want any of those, um, even if it's just really subtle, like that, it's already more interesting, okay? So you don't have to go crazy, but you definitely want, you know, a little curve maybe. So I'm going to curve this out too, okay? And once you have some curve, then it becomes a lot more interesting. Um, now I might put a serif on it. Now this is a serif. Okay, so I'm not very good at serifs for some reason. And if you notice, I changed it to a um, diagonal here. And I brought that out. Okay, so I'm going to bring that out too. And I might, um, I might do oop, a big arrow here. Arrows are always good in graffiti art because it makes your graffiti look like it's moving somewhere, okay? And you can also overlap. Overlaps are really cool, okay? Once you overlap something, what you're doing is you're putting something in the front and you're putting something in the back. So whenever you have like one of those little overlaps, those are good things. So there's, you know, there's a letter. Let me pause this so I can move it away. Now the, the swishy 
remember soft swishy and hard right the swishy one is pretty good but you know i could probably do a little more interest in it it's could be a little more interesting i think if it had um just a little more stuff happening so if you could see i'm always i don't know if i like that but i might curve that a little more and then i might just make this more like that i might go like that a little bit okay so you know I, i'm still messing with it okay i'm always messing with the letter until i get it exactly the way i want um i might make this one i think i might want to make this one a little thicker actually just to add a little interest let's see if that works so as you can see constantly moving around yeah i like that thicker so this i might make thicker as well because now i like it okay um, thicker is usually better. You want to go thick. Okay. Boop. All right. That's not bad. Okay. So I'm liking it better now that it's a little thicker. Okay. And I like this. I'm pretty happy with everything. Then of course the next stage would be, oh, I'm going to make this a little thicker too. Boop. No. I'm going to, um, actually make this a little thicker, you know, and I'm playing around with it until it gets to where I want it to be. Okay. I'm kind of happier with that one now all right now so that would be an example of like a swishy one okay one that has a lot of movement arrows and added stuff and um those look really cool too okay so soft swishy now let's go to one that's kind of hardcore more like um just basically you know very um cornery okay I'm still putting a serif in there, but as you can see, I don't have anything that's curvy. And if you notice, I'm just really, I'm not quite sure yet how this is going to look, but, you know, that's kind of cool. I kind of like that. So when I'm going hard edged like that, then um, it's not bad. Um, but there's some inconsistency. So like this, for instance, this, um, serif it's called a serif okay is different than this one so i might want to change this around a little bit okay and I, what i really want you to see is how much i mess around with it but if you notice none of my lines none of them are uh vertical or horizontal okay no and no i'm always keeping everything at a diagonal i kind of like that one okay so this is some examples of how you distort your letter and you graffitiize it hold on one second i'm going to pause it okay so now i put an a on there so i've decided i like this one the best okay and i don't know i just do i'm still gonna mess with it but i like it so i need to translate my r everything i did in my r to my a so if i notice so i want my a to look like my r because it has to have that consistency so i'm going to work on top of it Hold on, let me just make sure I'm on the right uh, layer, uno momento. Okay, so I'm going to go on top of it, and I'm just basically going to look towards my R as a guide on how my A is going to look, okay? I'm going to put a little curve there. I'm going to put a little curve here. And as you can see, I have a serif right there. Okay. Eh, I didn't like that last line. Hold on. Okay. Better because it's at a diagonal. Now, I might put an arrow right up here to uh, kind of I don't know. I think it kind of looks stupid up there. But I am gonna put an I am gonna put like a serif like an arrow there, and I think the problem with that arrow is it's not really like that one. So let me figure out how I can do that. So are you seeing how I'm building on this? I'm building on there we go. I'm building on what I've already done. Okay. Um, I like it. I like the arrow. I don't like this. So let me see if I can. And do you notice the amount of erasing I'm doing? Yes. 
that's what you're supposed to do, okay? You're supposed to mess with it until you get something you like, okay? It takes a while. Uh, eh, eh, it's okay. It's getting there. There we go. So now my A looks, excuse me, it looks like it matches my R a little more, a little more. Again, I would mess with it, but that would be how I would, um, ooh, it's too, too skinny over here. I need to fatten that guy up. So you see how this here wasn't reflected over there. So as you can see, I'm still erasing. I'm wondering if I need that, but it's getting better. No, I don't think I need that. So I'm going to erase that too. La la la. I'm going to get there. Don't worry. I'm just going to have to make this a little bigger. Okay. Now. Okay. Liking it a little better now. All right. But as you can see, they belong together. Okay. They have the same kind of things going on. They have, um, a lot of continuity. Okay. You want that consistency. Okay. More or less, I still have a lot of messing to do with that A, but it's getting to where I'm liking it a little bit better. Okay. So what do you do with something like an O? Ugh. O's are a problem because they're boring and T's are really boring too. So I'm going to do one O and one T. Okay. So now I have the O. So I am still using this as a key. So that kind of shows me a little bit about what I'm going to do. So what I'm going to do, let me make this a little darker here, is I'm probably going to not do that. Hold on. Kind of do a little thing here, like a little arrow overlapping it, okay? Because really that's about as exciting as you can get with it. But I might change the shape a little bit so it's a little um, more oval. Okay, so that's one thing you can do with an O. And I can also make the inside a little fatter here. So that um, a little, there we go. And then I can do a little overlap. And then my O is just a little more interesting. The T, same thing. So, you know, I want to, there's so many in the T, there's so many um, straight lines that it, tends to, um, okay, so see how I'm always curving, always curving. And I might um, do another arrow right here. No, I'm not going to do another arrow. That's going to look stupid. But I am going to put here a little bit of a um, serif and see if that helps. And remember, I want to fatten it up a little bit, okay? Okay, eh, it needs to be fatter. Okay. Be careful with the T because sometimes when you add too much stuff to it, it ends up looking like a J. All right, so I'm liking it better as I fatten it up a little bit more. Okay, starting to starting to come together a little bit. So I struggle with T's because they're just they're just you know they're not the most exciting letter. All right, but you know, poor T. All right, now it's starting to to ring my bell a little more. Let's see how this looks. Okay, so not bad, not a bad start. I would still believe it or not, still I've got some messing to do with the T and the O until they come out the way I'd like them to. Of course, after you're done doing that, then you three-dimensionalize it. So that gives you an idea on how to um, distort your letters um, for graffiti art. So you start again with our friend, the block. You just dis you decide on what style you're using. So we did that one, we did that one, we did this one, and we did this one. And we decided on the swoosh style, not the hard-edged, not the soft edge, okay? Then I did an R because R's have everything in it. It has a curvy line, it has straight lines, and it has a diagonal line. And then once I do an R, I can, you know, like a P is the same thing, right? A P is just an R without the thing. Hold on. Okay, sorry. Um, a P is just um, basically an R without that sticky thing, okay? So if my P, my P would kind of look like this. Right? 
more or less. But I'm always, once I find my style, then I use that for everything. Okay, peeps? And that is how you do graffiti. Block letter, find your style, decide on your style, do an R because R's have everything. Then um, make sure that all the letters that you do, okay, look like that style. Use the things, like I have one of those, I have one of these, I have one of those. Okay, so I make sure that I have them all in everything else I do, especially my A looked really good. And A is just an R kind of ish. All right, and that's it. All right, bye.